as it was for the last more than a decade. The ceremony is organized by the September 11th family group. Now I would like to invite Roman Gersberg, father of Marina Gersberg, for the welcoming remarks. Как это было последние более десяти лет, наша церемония организована группой September 11 Family Group. Я хочу предложить сейчас Романа Герцберга, отца Марины Герцберг, чтобы начать церемонию. Gentlemen, I know that uh, for all of us here today, and in fact for all Americans, uh, September 11 forever changed our world. Almost 3,000 people perished that day. Among them were children, parents, spouses, friends, and all uh, of those who sit here today. Among them was my beautiful daughter, Marinochka. Right after the 9-11, our families united and formed our organization with only one purpose, to keep the memories of our loved ones alive. 16 years passed, and all these uh, years we stayed together, supporting each other, mourned together and built together. And I wanna thank you all who come here year after year to show your support, to show that you care, to pay respect, to honor the memory of our loved one. Thank you for all these years you have been by our side. God bless you all and God bless America. <laughs> Просто сказать еще два слова по-русски для тех, кто не понимает, что 16 лет назад, когда мы организовали нашу компанию с одной только целью, чтобы память наших близких не ушла, мы были как одна семья все эти годы, и терять людей очень и очень тяжело. И за, эти, за этот последний год мы потеряли Валеру Савинкина, и Розу Молдаванскую, и Якова Дубенского и Мишу Илканаева. Это очень-очень тяжело, но могу вам сказать, что мы остаемся strong, and we're gonna continue, и мы стараемся быть сильными и будем продолжать нашу миссию. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Of the veterans of the World War II. I'd like to acknowledge their participation and welcome them to the ceremony. С нами здесь сегодня ветераны Второй мировой войны. Я хотел бы отметить их приход и приветствовать их на нашей церемонии. Thank you. For the clerical address, I'd like to invite Rabbi Ari Katsin. Сейчас, обращ... Сейчас я хотел бы позвать, э, пригласить Рабая Ари Кацин для обращения с священнослужителями. Помню, люди ходили по улицам и летали бумажки, да, летали бумаги, и был запах города, и был трепет и страх. Мы столкнулись с страшным терактом, со смертью. И это было в преддверии Рошишона, и были люди, которые вообще испытывали такой страх, боялись вообще, может быть, даже в синагогу пойти, что будет дальше. И если вспомнить врага, который этот теракт задумал, то он объяснил то, что, может быть, мы не понимаем и по сегодняшний день. Я скажу по-английски то, что он говорил. They glorify life and we glorify death. То есть сила ненависти, зла, которая пришла на Америку, это была сила тех, которые выбирают смерть. И это было перед Рошишоной, днем суда. Когда евреи стоят в синагогах, или если не в синагогах, то у себя дома, и они ощущают, что перед ними две книги, книга жизни, книга смерти, 
и в Торе говорится, и выбери жизнь, и мы просим о жизни, и во всех молитвах Рошишона мы говорим, лыхаем, лыхаем и лыхаем, чтобы были записаны в книгу жизни, и чтобы была жизнь счастливая, добрая, хорошая всем нашим близким и друзьям. И возможно, что смысл такого не случайного, конечно, совпадения к уроке, что даже если мы не можем изменить определенного рода события, мы не можем изменить прошлого, но мы все равно можем изменить свое отношение к этим событиям. И если они хотели напугать нас, запугать нас, сломить нас, подчинить себе, то Америка как страна, наша цивилизация, наша община, каждая семья, которая здесь сидит, не сломлена. Она выбрала жизнь. Она продолжает, несмотря на боль, не боль утраты, продолжает жить во имя своих близких, во имя своего будущего, будущих своих семей, своих общин. Я хочу пожелать всем нашим дорогим семьям, чтобы Всевышний дал вам силы, чтобы Он вас утешил. Я понимаю прекрасно, что время не лечит, конечно, и что боль утраты остается. Чтобы Всевышний облегчил вашу боль, мы хотим разделить ее вместе с вами. Чтобы Он дал вам силы жизни. И чтобы, дай Бог, что мы встречались на радостях. We are inviting Mr. Eric Gonzalez, District Attorney of Brooklyn. Сегодня у нас много почетных гостей. Позвольте начать, пригласив Эрика Гонзалеса, прокурора Бруклина. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Eric Gonzalez. I'm your Brooklyn DA. I'm here today for a very simple reason. I'm here to honor the families of September 11th. It's been 16 years. But we can't forget, and we, we have to continue to always remember and have the people we've lost in our lives and make sure that we, we honor them. And so today I'm here with many other people to say we love all of you, all of the families of September 11th who, who've lost so much. Every New Yorker had knew someone in those buildings, but for the families, This is always a sacred day. So I'm here just to say, as your DA, that I'm here in, in spirit and in love and in remembrance of all of the families of September 11th. And together, we will get through today. We will continue to make sure that our city continues to be the best city in the world, that no one can ever take that away from us. God bless you, and thank you for having me with you. Thank you. Our honored guest address will continue with Mr. Steven Simbrovitz, New York Assemblyman. Следующий почетный гость будет Стивен Симбровец, член Ассамблеи Нью-Йорка. Good afternoon. Today we mark the 16th anniversary of the day that changed our city and our nation forever. I want to take a moment to remember Larry Savinkin, who helped organize the 9-11 family group as a way of honoring his beloved son Vladimir and all of the other Russian Americans who gave their lives on 9-11. Larry understood the importance of coming together every year to pay tribute to those who were lost. This is a sad tradition, certainly, but it reminds the world that our sons, daughters, husbands, wives, and friends will never be forgotten. They will always be with us in our hearts and memories. As we stand together in remembrance Let us also find the strength in our resiliency as a community. 16 years ago, our community and city pulled together with honor, kindness, and purpose. 
at our worst, we were truly at our best. As a nation in 2017, we are still pr a proud symbol of freedom and democracy throughout the world. While we continue to live under the threat of terror, we are vigilant, but definitely not afraid. We travel, we live our lives, and we look with hope towards a future safe for our children and grandchildren. We've heard from the father. Now I'd like to invite the mother. In memory of our loved ones, I'd like to invite Nellie Braginski, mother of Alex Braginski. Вы слышали отца, потерявшего дочь. Сейчас я приглашаю мать. Неля Брагинская, мать Алекса Брагинского. Дорогие друзья, я рада видеть вас всех здесь. И вы здесь не потому, что вам нечего делать дома или некуда сходить или нечем заняться. Вы здесь, потому что вы все эти годы с нами все. Спасибо вам. Поверьте, вы не можете воскресить наших детей, но легче, когда рядом друзья, которые приходят здесь, не раздают подарки, не, не угощают обедом. Но вы все здесь. Спасибо. Дай Бог вам здоровья и благополучия вам и вашим детям, внукам, чтобы все были здоровы. А, я хочу сказать, что когда я получаю письма из Волтри Центра, где крупными буквами они знают, кому шлют, это не просто письма, они мне, нам всем пишут, Never Forget, это кому они пишут, нам, матерям Never Forget, разве может мама, вот здесь очень много женщин, мамы, бабушки, нет вообще об этом разговора, мы живем с этим, мы спим с этим, мы, нам снится это, мы ночами просыпаемся, кто спит, кто не спит. Бывает и перезваниваемся ночами, отправляем имейлы. Да, я тоже не сплю. Здрасте. Встретились. И всем спасибо. Нечего говорить. Легче не становится. Мы обязаны жить. Мы обязаны помнить о них. Если мы, нас не станет, я не думаю, что кто-нибудь из членов правительства организует что-либо здесь для нашей общины. Не думаю. Ну, дай Бог. Я хочу сказать, я... Праве, думаю, считать. И вы все со мной согласитесь. У нас есть еще две семейные пары, которые тоже должны быть внесены, но ну, не в книгу, а чтобы вы знали, что у нас есть две пары, которые являются членами нашей семьи. Вы знаете обоих, обе эти пары. Дина. Oh, I'm sorry, я говорю по-русски, но для того, чтобы вы лучше понимали, и я больше могу сказать по-русски, чем по-английски. Я так в совершенстве не знаю английский, как русский. Дина и Джонатан Лидер. This is our family. Я говорю всем, чтобы вы знали. Это люди, которые 16 лет с нами. Спасибо вам, Дина, Джонатан. God bless you. God will help you. You're supposed to be healthy and always will be with us. И вторая пара, вы тоже их хорошо знаете. Господа ли советские, Аллочка, Дима, это тоже наша семья. В самые тяжелые минуты жизни, когда нам было так плохо, что жить не хотелось, эти ребята были с нами, да они со всеми. Они, я не знаю, где они берут душевные силы, чтобы быть такими, как они есть. Я вроде тоже не злая, но я не знаю, ли я сумела бы все время общаться с людьми, у которых такое горе. Я наверное, не знаю, что было бы. Они умеют, они стараются. Ребята, где вы есть? Вот вы. Спасибо вам за все, что вы делаете. И вы члены нашей семьи. И на будущий год я вас лично посажу на скамейке, где написано «Фэмили». Это ваши места. Мы все к вам относимся с большим уважением. Вы всем нам помогли, кому пришлось. Ну и нам еще придется. Это ясное дело. Спасибо вам. И вам всем, друзья. Будьте здоровы. Берегите детей. Берегите себя. Не злитесь. Потому что что, что можно забыть и опустить, так опустите. И будьте вы все здоровы. И приходите. Мы постараемся как-нибудь дошкандыбать тоже, если не так красиво сумеем ходить. Но ничего.
Обнимаю вас. Следующий почетный гость наш – это член Ассамблеи Нью-Йорка Хелен Вайнстейн. As the rabbi said, there are many events today, gatherings to remember the families and those who perish on 9-11. But none is, to me, more moving uh, than this group, the families of 9-11. It may not be the biggest group of people gathering together, but you can tell the the heartfelt warmth of people, whether it is act, the families and relatives or the community that's come to join together to remember those brave men and women, children, parents from our community that perished on 9-11. It is always an honor for me to join with you on this occasion, this occasion and to see so many of you at other happier occasions. And I would be remiss if I didn't also say that I know Larry would be so proud to see how an idea uh, has become, continues without him to be continue to be a very important tradition for our community. I look forward to joining you year after year as long as I am able to and to make sure that years from now people in our community recognize the sacrifice that so many from our from this part of Brooklyn made on that day. Next on our guest has been a guest to us, has become a friend of families of 9-11. Allow me to invite Councilman Mr. Heim Deutsch. Следующий почетный гость стал больше, чем гостем для нас. Он друг организации семей 11 сентября, член горсовета Хайм Deutsch. Thank you. On the morning of Tuesday, September 11, 2001, parents kissed their children goodbye before they left to go to work. Businessmen and travelers boarded the airplanes for a quick flight. Cops and firefighters began their shift. Many of the loved ones still at, still at home preparing for the day ahead. Within hours, more than 2,000 of these people had lost their lives. Many were ordinary people working to pursue a career, to make ends meet, to follow the American dream. This was 16 years ago, yet it still feels like it was yesterday. Those of us who were here on that day can remember seeing the cloud of smoke and ash rising above Manhattan for days. Some of us found paper of remnants that floated from the World Trade Center into our backyards. We can all remember the terror we felt on 9-11-2001 as we wondered if our lives would ever be the same. Tens of thousands of us lost family members, friends, neighbors, acquaintances. Our police and firefighters lost hundreds of brave heroes. As New Yorkers, the cloud of that day still hangs above us. We scan the sky worriedly when we hear a low flying plane. We listen nervously when a radio or TV anchor announces sudden breaking news. And we flash back to that awful day every time that we hear of another terrorist attack around the world. The events of 9-11 continue to affect us to this day. On August 7, 2017, that's only five weeks ago, a victim's remnant remains were finally identified using DNA testing. Some police officers and firefighters 
who heroically charged, though as a danger and risked their lives to save others, are suffering medically from the fumes that they inhaled. Every year, September 11, millions of Americans take time to remember the lives lost in 2001. In southern Brooklyn, we have the place to visit all year round here in Astor Levy Park. Thanks to the September 11 family group, we have this beautiful and peaceful memorial right here in our neighborhood. I want to thank Roman Gertzberg for his hard work each and every year to ensure that not only do we have a touching and emotional tribute, but also that the memorial is maintained and cleaned throughout the year. I also want to take a moment to remember Lavi Savinkin, who was a powerful voice for justice in our community, who we lost just a few months ago. Sister of Vladimir Savinkin, Galina Savinkin. I also would like to mention her father, Valery Savinkin, who was one of the organizers, one of the visionaries of this park and this memorial. He passed away, but we will remember him and we will continue what he started. Сейчас я хотел бы пригласить Галину Савинкину, сестру Владимира Савинкина. И также я хотел бы отметить ее отца Валерия Савинкина, который был один из создателей, вдохновителей этого парка, этого, этой церемонии. Он больше не с нами, но мы помним его и мы будем продолжать то, что он начал. Um, my name is Galina Savinkin. I'm sure most of you know my father, or knew my father, I'm sorry. Um, the real reason we're here is to remember the ones that we lost on 9-11. And uh, unfortunately, my brother was one of them, Vladik Savinkin. He was only 21 years old, but he was uh, very accomplished and he was a very bright, bright person. And I hope that he's a bright star for us today. Um, what I wanted to say has to do with the reason that we come here every year, which is to remember memory. But it's so important for us to not just remember, because just like Nelia Berginska said, for us as family members, it's impossible to forget. We remember it every single day. What's happening in Texas and Florida, the images from my generation, that as long as we remain together, as long as we cherish the memory of our, of our loved ones, as long as we continue to love each other, love our community, love our country, fight for our country, that we'll be okay. So I'm here to say I thank you, I love you, and I will continue to do everything I can to honor and cherish the memories of your loved ones. Your loved ones are our loved ones. God bless you and thank you. In memory of our loved ones, I'd like to invite Rima Harlamova, the author of the book dedicated to the tragedy of 9-11. Harlamova, who wrote the book about this tragedy. После 11 сентября я почти три года работала с пострадавшими и семьями погибших 11 сентября. И за это время я встретила больше людского горя и в то же время больше душевного величия и поддержки, чем за всю мою жизнь. Поэтому я написала эту книгу на русском языке о своих подопечных, о работе и о коллегах. Моя коллега стала моей любимой, дорогой подругой Мила Лендерман, и она помогает людям, работая в офисе конгрессмена. Мы вообще не расстаемся, те, кто это пережили. Я издала книгу на Амазоне, выкупила, отдала вот Роману Герцбергу для семи 11 сентября. Кто захочет, тот возьмет. Меня очень поддержал в этой идее Валер Савинкин. Он сказал с самого начала, пусть наше неизбывное горе вашей книге станет частью общей беды. А потом также поддержали и во всем помогали Роман Герцберг и Феликс Ксида. Я 
потому это сделала, я понимаю, что это не великий дар, что прежде всего я до смерти боюсь, что завтрашний день может не наступить для моих детей и внуков, судя по тому, что творится в мире. А во-вторых, потому что недостаточно только помнить. Вас не надо призывать помнить. И нас тоже. Мы все, я написала, осиротели в этот день. Надо что-то делать. Вот я смогла сделать эту книгу. Немного, но все, что могла. А наши политики, народные избранники, у них больше силы, больше власти, больше возможностей. Конечно, если они и до сих пор и помогали, и боролись, и впредь так и будут, я уверена в этом. Просто в первую очередь нужно помнить о американских согражданах, а не о политкорректности, на мой взгляд. Даже если придется обидеть каких-нибудь сомнительных беженцев ради нашего завтра, ради нашего блага. Мой отдельный голос как... Мой отдельный голос, конечно, не будет услышан, но ваши голоса будут. И единственная моя надежда, что завтрашний день наступит счастливый и благополучный для нас, для наших детей, внуков и потомков, это если мы все будем пытаться предотвратить повторение 11 сентября. Я на это надеюсь. Спасибо. Книга у Романа Бергберга. Каждый может... Political interventions that we hear today are performed by ideal ensembles, the chamber string quartet conducted by Yuri Shubov. Musical interruptions today are performed by group of Yuri Shubov. I always do this ceremony, and it's a privilege for me. But today, I have two privileges. Valia Ligina was not able to come because of the hurricane, because of the hurricane. Поэтому я скажу пару слов о моей сестре Лене. When we, when we lose our loved ones, we go through the range of emotions. From anger to pain of loss. Some of these emotions stay with us, some would go away. But some will morph. They will morph into something new. For me, such emotion became the loss of uh, my wise friend, my sister. Когда мы теряем наших близких, у нас целая гамма эмоций. У нас злость на тех, кто это сделал, у нас тяжесть потери. Эти эмоции, они какие-то остаются, какие-то уходят, а какие-то начинают превращаться во что-то новое, начинают приобретать новые формы. Для меня такой эмоцией стала потеря моего мудрого друга, моей сестры. She was wise. Well, first of all, she was older than me by eight years. She was definitely wiser, although some would say that's actually not that hard to be wider than me, but uh, she was always there because she had a family, and I just came to the United States. She had job, she had son, she had house. She knew everything. She knew how to, simple things, how to find the train at the Grand Central. She knew complex things, how to get myself in a situation that I would get myself into time from time. Она была не просто на 8 лет старше меня, она была гораздо мудрее. У нее, когда я сюда приехал, у нее была семья, у нее была работа, у нее был дом. Она все могла мне объяснить. Она мне могла объяснить, как найти поезд на Гранд Центр. Она могла мне объяснить, как выйти из тяжелой ситуации, в которую я себя заводил. But today I have a very strange thought. I am now 10 years older than she would ever be. Because she is still 38. And I wonder, I actually don't wonder, I know that she would be still my wise friend today. I know she would be there for me, but she is not. And every year I'm getting older and older than she would ever be. Я сейчас на 10 лет старше, чем моя сестра когда-либо будет в жизни, потому что она всегда будет, ей всегда будет 38 лет. И я, я задумываюсь, какая бы, какие бы были наши отношения на сегодня. Она бы, наверное, все еще была моим 
мудрым наставником, моим другом. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no profound meaning in this story. There is no great conclusion. This evening is not for profound stories. It's for sharing what we think about our loved ones. And I just thought I would share this thought that stays with me all the time. Дамы и господа, у этой истории нет какого-то очень глубокого вывода. Потому что наш вечер сегодняшний не для глубоких выводов. Наш вечер для того, чтобы помнить о всех погибших, чтобы делиться историями и рассказывать о том, что мы думаем. Спасибо большое за то, что вы сегодня пришли. Спасибо что, за то, что вы позволяете нам делиться нашими историями. И вы слушаете нас. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming today. Thank you for listening to our stories. And thank you for staying with us. Diane Savino, Senator. Наш, наш следующий почетный гость, Senator Diane Savino. Thank you, Roman. I want to thank the September 11th family group for inviting me again to come and speak to you on this very important day. You know, I've been coming every year now for, seems like, 12 years. Uh, and every year we try and think, what will we say? What message can we deliver to the families who have been so profoundly affected? What words can I come up with to make you feel better? And the truth is there are none. There really are, there's nothing any of us can say to make us feel better about what happened on that fateful day. And I think back where we all were on September 11th, the day that your hearts were ripped out of your body, the day that we were all shattered as a nation, when our feeling of safety our feeling of, of being invincible as Americans was forever altered. But here we are today, 16 years later. And as elected officials, we're going to go from event to event. One of the things that has happened since then is groups like yours have created spaces where we can commemorate what happened. Whether it's here in Astor Levy Park where you have a plaque that commemorates the 18 people from this community whether it's the event I will attend in a little while tonight in Staten Island, down on the waterfront, it's a beautiful commemoration called Postcards, where we're going to read the names of the 300 plus Staten Islanders that were killed on that day. Whether it was the event this morning where they read the names of everyone, or that same situation that's replicated all around this city and the tri-state area, down in Washington, in Philadelphia, everywhere, somewhere today, people are stopping to recognize what happened on that day. But as Roman said, when he talked about his sister, and he realized that today he's 10 years older than she ever would be if she, had, if she was alive, time marches on for all of us. The calendar doesn't wait for anybody. And here we are 16 years later. And you know, I think about where we are now. I have a 16-year-old nephew. I don't have any children of my own. That's why I don't have any gray hair. Well, at least I color it anyway. But he was an infant when September 11th happened. And so I realized that for him, September 11th is a history moment. In many ways, the way I looked at Pearl Harbor. He will never understand what September 11th meant to me or to you. He can never see it the same way we did. He was too young. And then I realized that as a 16-year-old, every other child born after him is exactly the same way. They will never know how we were so profoundly affected on that day unless we tell them. Think about this. We are approaching the point where there will be people who never saw the original World Trade Center. They will never know the Twin Towers except in pictures. So it becomes our responsibility to see to it that we teach them. We have to teach it to them in our schools. We have to continue to hold these events, even though fewer and fewer people may come. It doesn't matter. If we're the only ones who come, but there's only two people here in 20 years, we should continue to hold this event, and the event down at Ground Zero, and the event on the waterfront in Staten Island, and every other commemorative event, because we must never forget, and the only way we never forget is to continue to tell the story. So I'm honored to be here with you again, 
and I am proud to be part of this community, and I hope that I will be here with you next year and every year thereafter. Thank you for inviting me. Good evening, all. Um, it's, it's really with heavy heart that we come here to this event. Um, this reminds us of our, our beloved colleague, Larry Savinkin, who worked with us for many years, who, as you're aware, was a, 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 a very um, active person in our community. But on behalf of Congressman Jeffries, who is in D.C., um, and really uh, was not able to change his travel plans due to his responsibilities in D.C., he made sure that both myself and also Ludmilla Lenderman, who's also in the audience um, from Congressman Jeffrey's office, was here and present and with the families as we commemorate um, this uh, anniversary of September 11th and the loss of families. Um, on behalf of the Congressman, the Следующий гость, член финансового управления города Нью-Йорка, мистер Скотт Стрингер. Thank you, and thank you everyone for your work in organizing this ceremony that has such a great tradition. And I also want to thank the families of the 9-11 victims, the elected officials, and members of the community. But I especially want to remember somebody who was really the heart and soul of this gathering, and we're thinking about Larry today. He did extraordinary work bringing people together, and I just want to pay tribute to him and to recognize his family. Uh, this is a very... Today, we don't just think about 9-11 for one day, but we rededicate ourselves to making sure that we are safe both here at home in Israel to make sure that freedom-loving people everywhere are protected and that is something that we all believe in. Today we're all Americans no matter where we come from and I just want to say I've never been prouder of this city than on a day like this when all of us come together and this gathering here in Coney Island has always been part of the way we remember 9-11 and that's because all of you come out and pay tribute. Thank you all. God bless you and we will make sure that we are watched over and protected. Thank you. People who undoubtedly you guys will welcome wholeheartedly, Dina and Jonathan Leader. Я приглашаю наших самых лучших друзей, людей, которых вы несомненно будете приветствовать, Дина и Джонатан Leader. Once again, thank you all for, uh, for coming. Uh, I also want to uh, acknowledge Larry Savinkin, Roman Ross, and uh, especially Nellie for her uh, special exuberance. And um, since neither Dina nor I are running for elective office, as far as I know, I would just like to uh, thank Dina so much for the incredible work that she's done. You cannot know how often her phone rings. You cannot know how many people are looking to her, not only members of the 9-11 group, but other people for help, for counsel, and for support. So, Dina, I thank you so much for everything. Um, I don't know if Rabbi Katsin is still here. Good. So, um, I want to say a few words uh, that relate to uh, this time of year in the Jewish calendar. I know that you're not all Jewish, but I think it will become clear to you nonetheless what I'm trying to say. So we are in the uh, Jewish month of Elul, and Elul is a month in which we prepare for Yom Kippur. We examine ourselves and we enter into a dialogue with God to try and understand perhaps what He is asking of us, what is He requiring of us. And Sometimes God answers back, sometimes he doesn't, but I must say, in this month of Elul, God has indeed answered back, and in some very difficult ways. This has been a month, of course, of terrible hurricanes. This has been a month of earthquakes. This has been a month of the threat of nuclear war. 
This has been a month of political scandals. So we must ask ourselves, if we believe in this idea, is God frowning on us? Is he criticizing us? Is he telling us that we are doing something terribly wrong? We could take that interpretation, but I would like to take another interpretation, and that is that there is indeed hope. And I'd like to give a few examples of hope that exists. I think it was Ross, I don't want to shortchange anyone, who said before that when the hour looks darkest, sometimes the brightest is yet to come. But in all of these terrible events that have happened in this month of Elul, we have people helping others. Thousands of people going to Texas and Florida to help. Hundreds of millions of dollars being given to the Red Cross. First responders appearing on the scene. You might have seen on TV workers from Con Edison volunteering to go to Florida, not see their families for a month to help repair the power grid. We've also, of course, in the 9-11 group, had weddings, new babies, children, and in one unbelievable case, a true miracle of Hashem, a new member of our family joining us today, all the way from Seattle. I refer, of course, to Esther, who is Esther Ilkanayev's granddaughter, a family that has been separated basically since 9-11 and has been brought together this year. There is a sense, there is a sense that we are responsible for one another. And indeed, an English poet named John Donne said a long time ago, no man is an island unto himself. I want to finish with a quote from Anne Frank. Most of you know who Anne Frank was, but for those of you who don't, Anne Frank was a 16-year-old Dutch girl, Jewish, who went into hiding for four years in Holland. And even at the age of 16, she had enough awareness to know what was going on in the world around her. And she had enough awareness to know that in all likelihood, her life would not work out well. And terrible to say it did not. Shortly after she wrote these words in her diary, she was taken to a camp and she did not survive. It's very common just to quote one sentence of what Anne Frank said. But I went to the book and I would like to read three or four sentences of what she said because I think it gives greater meaning to the important line. And here is what she said. She said, I can't build my hopes on a foundation of confusion, misery, and death which is what she saw around her. She said, I see the world gradually being turned into a wilderness. I hear the ever approaching thunder which could destroy us. I can feel the suffering of millions. And yet, if I look up into the heavens, I think that it will all come out well, that this cruelty will end that peace and tranquility will return again. And then she said in the line that every school child knows, in spite of everything, I still believe that people are really good at heart. In spite of everything, I still believe that people are really good at heart. Without this belief, there is only despair. So let us believe in the goodness of man, and as all of you have demonstrated by today, let us all help each other. Thank you very much. Now I would like to start the lighting, the ceremony of the lighting of memorial candles and reading the name of, the, of those who perish. Сейчас мы начнем церемонию зажжения свечей и чтения имен погибших.
Daniel Elkanaev. Евгений Князев. Alexander Ligon Yelena Melnichenko Юрий Мошенский Савинкин. Гарри Шамай. Simon Weiser Salzman Zuckerman Scheinberg One more candle for everybody who perished in 9-11 Please sit down. All the families and everybody else.
for the ceremony of laying flowers at the memorial plaque. Дамы и господа, я хотел бы пригласить всех членов семей и всех вас присутствующих для возложения цветов к мемориалу.